What's up guys, it's Julian here, your San Diego solar expert back with another super valuable video. No BS here. That seems to be obviously what this whole solar industry is. A bunch of guys just giving you some like non-value sales pitch. So once again, trying to you know give you as much free value as possible. Today, I actually brought my buddy Tyler here. Hi, Tyler's, Tyler's been in the industry for uh, several years as well as me. Uh, he actually has sold PPAs a lot more than I have in the past. And so I wanted to bring him in to this video to you know really get his insight onto some of the details on how a lot of these solar companies are ripping you off. Well, thanks Julian. Yeah, I'm really excited to share all this information with you guys so that way that you guys can avoid getting uh you know, put not in a very good situation with these power purchase agreements. Uh, I've been doing solar for close to four years now. And when I first got started, the only value proposition I had to offer was a Sunrun PPA. Uh, I didn't know what I know now. Uh, and the only people in my professional opinion that, uh, that should get a power purchase agreement are those that are retired, that are on social security, fixed income and they absolutely need to cut down their their monthly expenses in order to live uh, a decent life. So for those of you who don't know, a PPA stands for Power Purchase Agreement. And the reason why Power Purchase Agreements even came into existence was because banks were not always offering financing for solar. And the only way to go solar was to pay it cash. And especially 15 years ago, solar was way more expensive. So, you know, the average solar system was like 60, 70, $80,000 and, you know, only if you were either rich or just super pro environment and you were going to you know put out all this money that you know it was going to cost you way more basically to to go solar than not now it's you know it's money it's a money saving thing it's flipped of course but um the only way to go solar was to put down all this money so um the ppa came into existence sunrun actually invented the ppa and uh it, it, it solved the, the problem of not being able to get solar without putting down, you know, $80,000. But soon afterwards, just a few years later, banks got on board with financing uh, solar systems. And then, you know, really that, that made the PPA obsolete, you know, because now you can go solar still zero down, of course, but with way, you know, obviously way less cost over time. The common argument that a solar salesman might make to you that is trying to push a power purchase agreement um, onto you and your family they might say something along the lines of well at least it's a cheaper payment compared to the utility company and specifically where we're at currently today in sunny san diego that's really easy to do because the utility company here is charging anywhere between 32 34 38 40 cents a kilowatt and now it's based off of what time of day you use your electricity and it's we're in a we're in the most mature market in the in the industry as far as you know what's what's currently happened so the power purchase agreements were a really really big push about four or five years ago um, because the market was still uneducated but now that the market's becoming more and more educated when people are going to go sell their house uh, people are now getting like essentially their power purchase agreement if they were to get a power purchase agreement they're getting their power purchase agreement used against them in their sell of their home and then they're getting stuck in a position where they might need to pay off this really expensive power purchase agreement uh, that's a 25 year contractual obligation for either you or the next homeowner that's going to somebody's going to need to pick up the tab um, so that's a big thing and then in addition to that, they use the cheapest equipment possible to maximize their potential earnings. They will tell you like, well, hey, there's no maintenance. We have this production guarantee, which are both absolute garbage. But like essentially what these PPAs are is it's financially obligating yourself to like three times more than what you could be getting your solar system for if you were to buy your system with cash or if you finance the whole project with no money down. All right guys, so here we have a cost over time graph to show you the differences between doing a loan versus um, sticking with the utility and doing a PPA. So color, color coordinated, make it easy on you. So first we have buying your system with a loan. Now of course, the cost here, we've written 35K. That's obviously arbitrary uh, to, you know, which, how big of a solar system you're buying. They're all different costs. Uh, but let's just say, um, you know, theoretically in this case that the loan over the course of 20 years costs you $35,000. Now, let's say for a PPA, same size system, but at the end of the day, if you add up the, 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 the cost of the payments, it's gonna be almost twice as much. And that's when it's a flat rate. Now, when you're dealing with an escalation rate, 
This is actually how the math works out. If you have a 2.9% escalation and you have a basically, basically a $200 a month payment, it will end up to be about 60K in cost over the 25 year period. And with, a, with the escalator, it'll be almost $90,000 by the end of 25 years. Now, of course, these PPA options cost less than the utility, which is how they you know, sell you on it. They say, well, it's a better option and, and it is. But the fact that you can get basically higher quality equipment at a, at, at, with usually better warranties at a cost that's literally sometimes less than half, it really, it makes, it makes absolutely no sense and, 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 and only in the very most rare cases of, like Tyler said earlier, no tax liability, fixed income, and just need relief from, from the utility that it makes sense to do this. But buying the, buying the system is gonna give you way more savings over the long run. So there's a lot of issues with getting a power purchase agreement for your home. Um, the first thing is it's very expensive compared to owning your system outright, either through cash or financing. Uh, oftentimes the solar company that's offering a power purchase agreement is going to use the cheapest equipment possible, meaning like the cheapest panels, oftentimes from uh, China or like outdated equipment that they can get for as cheap as possible, that they can buy in bulk. And then they use string inverters oftentimes, which are going to fail but they they say well hey there's no, there's no maintenance cost there's none of this it's a service based company when in, in all actuality they're going to charge you 3 to 4 times more than what your system should cost to take care of your system it it doesn't make sense um there, and then some people are even getting talked into doing these escalated payment plans where it supposedly starts lower than what you're paying today. But then by the end of the 20 or 25 year contract that you sign, you end up paying two, two and a half times what you're, you're originally co quoted. And sometimes these, so these solar guys are going to frame it like, well, if you're going to be moving in three years, four years, five years, that's not going to be your problem. That's going to be the next homeowner's problem. The next homeowner is going to need to pick up that tab. Somebody's going to need to be paying, uh, you know, two to three times more than what they should be paying monthly if they're to finance their system. It, it literally just doesn't make sense. So the, the other thing is, is every payment that you make, or even if you pay off the system altogether, it's not your asset. It's you're essentially agreeing to another service. You're agreeing to taking on a liability. It's essentially like the idea of saying that you really like your like the idea of having a landlord uh, and you want another landlord to take care of your solar system and they're going to tell you like hey you have to pay us every month or if you want to get out of this contract you have to pay us a large lump sum of money that is more than what you could have done if you originally made a different decision and of course in in the two cases of with, with the ppa or the utility the money that you're spending is not adding any equity or value to your house with, with the purchase system, a lot of the times, you, you get the money right back out of the house when you go to sell it. it it's kind of like buying a car. It ends up being like uh, a collectible, or maybe it's similar like how it is right now where you buy the car and then it's still worth almost what you bought it for. It's basically like you drove around 10 years for free because you got to sell the car for the same price as you bought it for. Um, and so that's, especially with the getting the tax credit, you really only need to reap 74% of your cost back to literally have gotten free power for the time that you were in the house. And if you need to sell your house, for example, let's say it's a 20 year loan and you, 10 years goes by, you, you sell the house, what happens? In this case, the new buyer actually values the next 15 years of life out of your system and ends up paying you for the system and, and you end up ahead or not actually having any cost because you got your money back. In the case of the, the PPA, you basically have to convince the buyer of your house to take over your remaining debt and if they don't want it, then you have to pay it all off, which is a common scenario, unfortunately. Right. Um, a lot of the salespeople say, oh, it just easily transfers and in reality, you have to basically convince the buyer to take on sixty to, to, to ninety thousand dollars in liability that you chose for them all right so when you buy the system i mean if you're talking to good companies they're going to be like showing you like hey this panel is better for these reasons or or we use these inverters for these reasons and when you do a ppa they're really only concerned about one thing and that is installing a system for as cheap as possible and so not only do you basically have to pay way more money for a PPA versus buying the system, but you're also getting usually cheaper stuff.
or there are different components to the system than this, but these are the main two, the panels and the inverters. Most people just know about the panels, of course, but inverters are way actually more important than the panel. With premium panels versus like cheaper panels, there are, in my opinion, three stats about a panel that uh, you need to look out for. The first one is the actual, um, not just the standard test condition rate, watt or watt rating, but what the uh, uh, normal operating module temperature, uh, NMOT or NOCT is. And that's the, like what the real world watt rating is. Um, the other is the degradation rate. So certain panels over their life, uh, for example, if we're dealing with a more premium panel like an LG, REC or Panasonic, they're gonna degrade less than 10% over a 25 year period which is actually quite quite great. Now, the cheaper panels are like mid-grade panels. They're gonna be somewhere in the, usually like 15 to 20% degradation. So, you know, you see like Q-cells right around 85%. Um, a lot of the, there's a lot of other brands that are just a few percentiles lower uh, with their degradation. And then temperature coefficient. And temperature coefficient is how well the panel performs outside of its ideal temperature range. Panels get really, really hot up on the, on the roof and they don't, you know, electronics don't perform as well when they get really hot. So certain panels do better against the heat. And so uh, those will give you more power, even if the, the, you know, two panels have the same watt rating. If one has a better temperature coefficient, it's gonna actually give you more power. Um, Tyler, you wanna tell us a little bit about the uh, string in, or the centralized inverters versus the micro inverters? Yeah, sure. Uh, so with a power purchase agreement, they're gonna use the cheapest stuff that they got. Uh, they're going to buy it in bulk, uh, whatever's available. Most oftentimes stuff that's currently outdated, stuff that's been sitting around for, you know, one, two, three years. Because what their goal is, is with a power purchase agreement, is to lower the cost of the system as much as possible, promise you maintenance on something that you technically don't own, so why would you ever care what you're going to get? And then they're going to they're going to maximize their potential profits. But once you've identified a good company to go with and you're to pick the loan provider, you're picking the loan, you're picking the equipment, you're making sure that you're getting a micro inverting, inverting system versus a centralized system. The biggest problem with getting a centralized inverter is that there will be more than one time that the solar company or yourself will need to figure out how to swap that out to replace it. Literally like, in our experience, between 20 and 25% of the solar edge inverters fail within the first three three years. And we have to go replace them and it's this huge hassle. With the micro inverters, I've literally only seen a couple of them ever fail and they were they both failed on the same system right next to each other the first day of operation. So I've never seen a micro inverter fail outside of a week of, of working. And that's, that's after like years. So yeah, if you do a PPA, they're gonna put a string inverter on the side of your house. It's a, it's a nightmare to put yourself in this situation with this equipment because if the solar company takes a week to come out and service your equipment. Or a lot longer or longer because it's Sunrun or it's Vivint or Vivint's out of business and Sonova, Sonova doesn't even have crews. It's like whatever PPA provider that you're considering getting equipment from, they they have no financial obligation to come out and service your equipment quickly because that you're gonna pay them monthly regardless of whether or not the system's cranking out electricity or not. So when, they're, when your t system goes down and it's now 10, 15, 20 years down the road and they've been raking your money, like they got you on the hook, you're stuck. So with picking a like a ownership business model, like uh, picking the company that you're gonna choose to buy a solar system from, th either through cash or financing, you get to pick the loan, you get to pick the company, you get to pick the equipment, the, the inverters that you want. You get, to, you get to make an educated buying decision and that's the kind of people that you're gonna be dealing with when you start talking to the folks that are more on this side of the coin versus selling whatever it is that they've been taught to sell because they don't know any better. Yeah, guys, like what happens a lot of the time is you'll have the a PPA and you know your, your payments, whatever, 300 bucks a month for it. Yeah, you're saving money because it used to be 500, but your central inverter goes down. Sun runs impossible to get on the, the phone. They, they take three months to fix your inverter you have to continue paying your solar payments even though your system isn't even working because you have, a, you know, it's on auto pay or whatever. And then now you're raking up your, your bill from the utility company and now you have two bills at once and then Sunrun, once every two years, they, they're going to pay you for lost production, basically 
it's 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 the same rate that you're paying for their power, but it's not the it's not the amount that you had to pay the utility. So you're so, losing money. So you're so you're losing money now, and and you're not even getting all your money back, and and they're just nonchalantly. You know, willy nilly getting your project whenever they have time or it's convenient for them because they're too busy installing other systems that they're going to rake in another twenty to a hundred thousand dollars. We're going to talk about the terms that come with a PPA and how rigid they are. So, with the P power purchase agreement, you're locked into a 25 year payment plan. What that total cost comes out to be is whatever the payment is that you set up today times 12 months for the year times 25 years. And it's this crazy astronomical number compared to what you can do on the other side of this board. Um, and if you were to try to pay off this system early, there's a, an extra cost that Sunrun, Sonova, Vivint, they've baked in that if you wanna get out of their contract, you're gonna have to pay a p premium rate. So that's what a power purchase agreement is. Do you want to talk about the loan? So when you finance the system, you get the freedom to choose whatever term length you want. I, I sell loans between five years all the way up to 20 years. Now, the, the beauty of that is most people, they, they can pay their system off in a reasonable amount of time and then actually live in the house with no, no actual payment for the solar. Because, you know, I would say on average, people do like an eight year loan and they, drop their payment immediately for only eight years and then they see you know they see the light at the end of the tunnel you know it's paid off they're in the clear it's just like a paid off car now with the ppa 25 years now of course you know eventually 25 years is going to come and go but it's going to take a very very long time for you to ever basically have no payment and with with a solar loan you know i'd say on average eight to 12 years is, is what a, a good loan length would be where you can still drop your monthly expenditure and save money and build your equity way faster uh, than doing a ppa which obviously doesn't build any equity um, and of course if you need to get out of your loan especially if you've done a same as cash non buy down loan uh, you can just write a check for the principal balance and you're done um, and and now your your home value has shot up dramatically versus with a ppa it is literally a liability on your house and if you you know need to get out of it early you're going to pay a fee or at best a lump sum of all of the remaining payments at once and then you're left with a cheaper system that isn't even worth as much even if it is owned at that point in time if you're still watching this video, uh, we really appreciate it. We know it's getting kind of dark here. You've been watching the, the camera get progressively darker as, as the video has gone on. So uh, we're almost at the end here. So real fast, the last thing with the difference between the PPA and the loan is that when you do PPA or, or when you do a solar system, there's a 26% federal tax credit attached to the solar system. Now, if you do a PPA, the company you're going through, Sunrun, Vivint, uh, obviously Sunrun owns Vivint now, but or Sonova, any of those companies, they get your 26% tax credit. You pay your payment and don't get any tax benefits. With a loan and you owning the system, you get the tax, the federal tax credit. So that just adds to, to your savings because you know a $20,000 system really is like a $14,800 system after you get the tax credit. So, uh, and, and by the way, the tax credits are going down over the next few years. It's 26% this year in 2022. 4% lower next year, 22%, 2023. And then it's gone as of right now. And there's a lot of talk about this changing, but as of right now, this is the, the step down plan. So uh, once again, thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you need to contact me, once again, my name is Julian. My phone number is 760-473-5878. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about going solar anywhere over the United, or anywhere all over the United States. 